please stand and face toward the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear brethren, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters, scattered throughout the world, to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Tall time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. <clears throat> May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Ye glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing in end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God the Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy, 
among the Levites. May pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebearers, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christians, believers, apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earns so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, were thee alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, 
restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you, that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undim to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still be burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and these last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. <clears throat> Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, 
and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of water he called the sea. God saw how how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The Word of the Lord. You may blow out your candles. out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. 
You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean as with a garment you covered it, above the mountains the waters stood. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. You sent forth springs into the watercourses that wine among the mountains. Beside them the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches they sent forth their song. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. You water the mountains from your palace. The earth is replete with the fruit of your works. You raise grass for the cattle and vegetation for man's use producing bread from the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the book of Genesis. One second. One second. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning except that at the end of the ages Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust, on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued. Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, 
Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as holocaust in the place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh. Hence people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, oh. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery Make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore. Grant, we pray, that your peoples may ever winter worthily into the grace to which you call them. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, 
And you, lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed, without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its mist. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to the right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Your right. 
right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, fleeing from, from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand. Now you bring them about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with great tenderness I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians, and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. with 
the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, I will praise you, you have rescued me. ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as rain from the heavens, the rain and snow come down and do not return there, till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. springs 
hope of salvation. ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increased the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom, who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God, no other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord.
precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. constantly increase your church by your call to the nations. Graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. <coughs> Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they had poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So have I relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Deer that longs for running. 
God. The thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Like a deer that longs for running stream, like a deer my soul longs for you, my God. I went with the throng, throng and led them in procession to the house of God. Amid loud cries of joy and thanksgiving, with the multitude keeping festival. Like a deer that longs for running streams, like a deer my soul longs for you, my Lord. Send forth your light and your fidelity, they shall lead me Like a deer that runs for running stream, like a deer my soul wants for you, my God. Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God my God, like a deer that longs for a longing stream, like a deer my soul longs for you, my God. Let us pray. by the pages of both Testaments, instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal Mystery. Grant that we may comprehend your mercy, so that the gifts we receive from you this night may conform our hope of the gifts to come. Through Christ our Lord.
let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us for them the entrance of the tomb. When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The new day has dawned, and with that new day, the darkness has been turned to light, our sorrow to joy. The cross, once the sign of the harsh and crushing reality of suffering, is now purified and transformed by the body and blood of Christ. So utter is this cross remade that now it is traced across the entire person, in the form of blessing. Demons flee in confusion and fear at its approach. Men and women of faith kneel in veneration of its holy wood, which Christ bore as a mighty weapon against the gates of sin and death. The sign of torture is now one of comfort. The cross was raised as a statement of the dominion of the worldly power over man. But now the cross is lifted on high as the path to heavenly paradise. And so the cross has been reborn in the blood of Christ and raised in his resurrection. Christ's victory over death is so complete that even the stone, the stone itself, that once sealed in and buried the body of Christ, is now transformed to an altar an altar over which the living body of Christ is now made fully present. This same stone that closed over Christ, shutting in and pronouncing the finality, the inevitability of death's domination, is now rolled back, moved aside. And the unthinkable is made reality. For from that sepulcher came not death, but life. Not a simple resuscitation to life that ends in death again, but everlasting life. Not a life which Lazarus received when his tomb was opened by human hands, but eternal life, hinted at by the 
roll, the divine rolling back of the stone. And so now death, the captor has been taken captive and is now transformed by Christ, who entered the place of our greatest isolation and strode forth victorious. The new dawn has come, and with it, the joy of Christ's humanity and divinity made manifest to us. He is gloriously resurrected, yet still bears the wounds of suffering and debt repaid upon his sacred body. He opens his blessed hands, the hands of a carpenter, and offers to take up with you the work entrusted to you within creation. He steps forward upon his nail-marked feet to continue the journey with you that leads to his Father. And he exposes his sacred heart, inflamed with divine love in his ardent desire to pour himself out forever for you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, through holy baptism, death is now a passing journey, a welcoming home, for we now pass through the death of Christ himself. Jesus did not say to us that there would be no suffering in receiving him in this life. He does more than that. He utterly and completely transforms suffering in himself. Through divine transformation, we now identify Christ himself by the wounds he bears. Thus, to remove his wounds, to take away his cross, would be strip him of that which he has won for us and transformed from death to life and from sorrow to joy. We too should not be afraid of suffering for we have a redeemer who has given the greatest of meaning to suffering. As members of Christ's body baptized in his death and resurrection, we unite our sufferings to the cross of Christ and it becomes something joyful to bear. My dear catechumen and candidates, this holy night, you will be truly uniting yourself to this same Jesus Christ, who offers to you his whole life, his body and blood, soul and divinity, with his sacred hands and feet and heart, which he wholly offers to you not just this day, but each day, every day that you come before him. And so united to this body of Christ, and we as baptized members of Christ's body, I leave you with these words of St. John Chrysostom. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. He has destroyed it by enduring it. He destroyed Hades when he descended into it. He put it into an uproar, even as it tasted of his flesh. Isaiah foretold this when he said, You, O hell, have been troubled by encountering him below. Hell was in uproar because it was done away with. It was in an uproar because it is mocked. It was in an uproar for it is destroyed. It is in an uproar for it is annihilated. It is in an uproar for it is now made captive. Hell took a body and discovered God. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took what it saw and was overcome by what it did not see. O death, where is thy sting? O Hades, where is thy victory? Christ is risen, and you, O death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen and life is liberated. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of its dead, for Christ, having risen from the dead, has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen.
May the elect called to holy baptism come forward with their godparents, Brecken Sheso. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our brothers and sisters, in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. Please stand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints. 
Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. From all evil, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. pray. From every sin, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. pray. From everlasting death, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. pray. By your incarnation, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, Lord deliver us, us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring those chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, gracious hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humbly, humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, who by invisible powers accomplish a great and wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O oh God, who by the outpouring of the flood were shadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood. And after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your, holy, your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism, from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, God forever and ever. Almighty, ever-living God, who sent your Son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, 
and bring the human race rescued from darkness into the marvelous kingdom of your light. We humbly beseech you to free this, this person from original sin, to make her the temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in her through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you. As a sign of this, we, I anoint you with the oil of salvation, the same Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Brecken, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Brecken, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Brecken, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of power and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and brought you to new life through water and the Holy Spirit. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation so that united with his people, you may remain forever a member of Christ who is priest, prophet, and king. Amen. Brecken, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. In receiving this baptismal garment, bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Brecken, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a child of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom.
Sancte Spiritus, Vene Sancte Spiritus, Vene Sancte Spiritus, Vene Sancte Spiritus, De Spiritus, Vene Sancte 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 Spiritus. Mene Sancte Spiritus, Vene Sancte Spiritus, Vene Sancte Spiritus. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of our holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. May the candidates for reception into the Catholic Church come forward with their sponsors. Hope Harpham. One second, Father. Yeah.
May the candidates for the reception into the Catholic Church please come forward with their sponsors. Hope Harpham, Bailey Nielsen, Sarah Schindler, Matthew Turek. My dear candidates, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come forward with your sponsors and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. Hope, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here, so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Amen. Bailey, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here, so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Sarah, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Matthew, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here, so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you've professed in the presence of his family. May the candidate for the Sacrament of Confirmation, please come forward with her sponsor, Brecken Chaso. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ, and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by power, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Our Lady of Guadalupe, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Maria Goretti, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Claire of Assisi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Monica, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. You may blow out your candles. Let us now join together and bring all of our prayers and petitions before our Heavenly Father. For the Church, who all live life fully in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For every nation and people on this holy night, for the light of Christ in every heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not believe, for those who doubt, and for those who despair, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are close to death, for those who have died, and for those who bear the burden of loss, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have received the Easter sacraments, for their sponsors, and for the community that welcomes them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish family, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the needs of all here present, for which we now pause to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, through the intercession of all the saints, Hear and answer these prayers and petitions which we have confidently brought before your presence on this most holy night of our Lord's resurrection. And we ask and entrust all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our operatory hymn is number 565, located in the songbook. The strife is over, number 565. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has been begun in Paschal mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <coughs> we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and the rest of the sea of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and always to the Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners... Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom Trespasses, 
we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul.
Our communion hymn is number 60, located in the Missalet, Christ Be Our Light, number 60. At the break of day when women came with spices to anoint our Lord And walking to the tomb said, Who will move the mighty stone that bars the door? They found no stone but a man was standing there in bed in raiment white, saying, Jesus is not dead. He is not here, he is risen. See, the tomb is empty where he lay. He is not here, he is risen. Jesus rode on Easter day. Doubted that it could be but true. Running there to find the but running there to find the empty to believe to in the place where Jesus lay sat the burial house of the dead, laid aside like death denied. For he was no longer dead. He is not here, he is risen. See, the tomb is empty where he lives. He is not here, he is risen. Jesus rose on Easter day. The tomb is The tomb is empty, he is risen. 
Jesus Christ is risen. Hallelujah. joyful Easter letter from our bishop to the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the Diocese of Lincoln. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Alleluia, Jesus Christ is risen. This is the good news that is heard around the world today and settles in the heart of every Christian. In the words of Pope Francis, let us raise our eyes to the risen Jesus. His gaze fills us with hope, for it tells us that we are loved unfailingly. And that however much we make a mess of things, his love remains unchanged. This is the one non-negotiable certitude we have in this life. His love does not change. May the steadfast love of Christ fill your hearts and your homes this Eastertide. His love and the hope given to us through his resurrection is the cause of our joy. As we celebrate Easter, I am happy to join Archbishop Lucas and Bishop Hannafeld in announcing that the Sunday and Holy Day obligation will be restored on May 23rd, the Solemnity of Pentecost. It is my hope and prayer that the Holy Spirit will bring us all together once again as a Catholic community. More important about the, more information about this announcement will be forthcoming in the next several weeks as we journey together through the Easter season. Wishing you and your families every Easter blessing. I remain sincerely yours in Christ, James D. Conley, Bishop of Lincoln. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O Lord. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just want to give thanks for all those involved in helping with making our Easter Vigil celebration uh, truly one of joy uh, for our lector, our our wonderful, I was going to say seminarians, but for our um, altar servers, maybe seminarians one day, uh, for our uh, acolytes, as well as the, my brother priests being here and joining us. Uh, it's a true joy. Uh, to our new uh, neophytes, uh, that's what you call those who have been uh, 
uh, baptized as well joined in the church. So thank you so much for being here with your families. Uh, it's truly a joy that we enter into with the risen Lord, uh, especially to our choir. I can't forget our choir as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of my immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you, who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Our closing hymn is number 69, located in the Missalette. Jesus Christ is risen today, number 69. Jesus Christ is risen today. Ah, ah, ah.